this, uh, there's living memory of this on, uh, on, on Okinawa. Uh, there's, uh, uh, so they understand what happens when politics go bad, when, when peace disappears. They also are, and this brings, back to Guam, brings us back to Guam, they are also exceedingly appreciative of all of the educational opportunities that have been made available to Okinawans by the United States of America. Uh, when, uh, when I was serving there, I asked uh, to meet with uh, you know, people my age one on one. To, and, and I usually ask them, uh, you know, what is it that, uh, you know, we obviously have a lot of Americans here, what is it we can do to, uh, to uh, help? And the answer invariably was education, education, education. And that's why I'm so keen and why I tried to stress in my remarks that the, we want the same relationship here in Guam. Guam has been uh, uh, America's westernmost uh, territory, if you're looking at it from the United States, uh, uh, since 1898. Uh, Guam has earned its place in America. I mentioned Guam's contributions to every one of our conflicts in the past. I mentioned Guam's extraordinary support to our all-voluntary force now while we're engaged in two other conflicts in other places in the world. Uh, we have the opportunity, I'm convinced, along with this buildup, to do many, many things to not only do no harm as we build up the, the, our military presence here in Guam, but to actually enhance education, career opportunities, economic development here on Guam. And I think, as I said, the Center for Island Stability, I think, is a, is a marvelous way to organize all this. And I think it's a great leadership position for the University of Guam to, to assume in, in doing this. So, okay. Thank you again. Thank you so much. Students have a great weekend, faculty have a great weekend, thank you for joining us.